So how do you take out a window like, of that size? Well, this window here has got a wooden brick mold around it. Yep. So what we're going to do first, though, we're going to take off the casing on the inside. That's mm -hmm. the wood trim around the inside. Yep. Then we're going to remove the brick mold, and then we'll just pull the window out. And it'll pop out fairly easily? It should, fairly yeah. easily. And then the new one just pops right in. Same idea, different product. So simple sounding, isn't it, Chris? It is. I can't wait to see how this baby turns out. Okay, so the first part we have to do to remove this window yep. is to remove the wooden casing. Okay, so that's the frame that's around the window. Yeah, it's basically the decorative wood that goes around the window to border it and make it look nice. Yeah, and you can tell this is clearly the original window because Absolutely. there's some nasty looking stuff happening yeah, here. Yeah, the bottom sill has uh, taken on a lot of water over the years. Yeah. Obviously peeled up all the paint, probably rotted that sill. We don't have problems like that with the new windows, do we? No, the new windows have insulated glass, mm -hmm. so you don't have that cold, you don't have the condensation building up on the yeah. insides. And when you're cooking, obviously, if you're near the kitchen, that gets even worse. Yeah. So you don't have that dripping down and sitting on your sills and rotting. Do we still have wooden framed windows? You or can get, all... yeah, you yeah. can get wooden framed windows if you like to paint them or stain them. Yeah. Uh, but we also offer vinyl jams. Okay. And this particular window is going to have a vinyl jam, so you never have to paint it. Love that. Low maintenance, especially when you have kids or, you know, Absolutely. just don't have time to be doing stuff like Absolutely. that. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're just going to cut between the jam and the wall. And why are we doing that? We just want to break the, the paint bead, or if they've caulked it, we yeah. just want to break that so we don't tear the drywall and then make a mess of the paint. Because then we'd be re-drywalling the house. Absolutely. Good point. Are you sure it's safe to leave me with a blade in my hand? You look like you got good concentration going. Did I break the good. seal? <laughs> I guess you did. <laughs> we'll see how you work out now from here on out. Okay, so we'll just cut the bead around the whole window and then we'll start pulling off this casing. All right, cool. There you go. Perfect. All you had to say was that. <laughs> Perfect. Well, now we're done on the inside. Okay, same st same deal outside? Same deal outside. Okay. Yeah, just a little bit thicker. Okay. All right. So we've got the frame off. Are we ready to pull the whole piece out now? Is there any other prep work that needs to be done first? No, we're ready to go. We'll cool. undo those screws and... Uh, so that will they actually come out one piece nope. at a time? No, we'll... it'll, it'll still come in one piece, yep. but we'll just have to be careful. Okay. Yeah, so we'll undo those screws. I'll go have coffee and you can pull this out. Sure. Ta da! You're welcome. So, Chris, is this typically what we insulate with nowadays, or are things nope. very different? No, it's very different now. Now we use an expandable foam. Okay. This is the old uh, bat insulation, which they would just cut up into strips mm -hmm. and place in here. Yep. And as you can see, we got here about one inch piece that was probably sitting like that. The rest of the cavity was uninsulated. Not so, very much. No, and what they used to have to do is try and shove it in there after the fact so they'd have to squish it down. So it's really defeating the purpose. Exactly. It's not doing what it really is meant and to do. And what that insulation needs is air inside of it. Yep. So like this would be fine. Compressed like that is not good. So we're going to remove all that. Okay. How about all this old, the paper? All the paper is going to come off. And as you can see here, Got a little bit of rod on the block. Yep. That's fine. This block's gonna go anyway. Okay. The rest of the wood looks pretty good. So it's it, you don't really need to do too much then in terms of putting the new window in. Uh, we do have to prep the opening. Yeah. But for now, we'll just uh, pull all this paper off and then we'll go on to the prep. Okay. Okay, Sue. So now the old window's out. Yep. Uh, we've. Uh, Looked at the opening, there's no rod. It's actually in really good shape. Mm -hmm. uh, we've pulled all the nails, got rid of all the staples that are in the way. Yeah. Now we need to prep our opening for the new window. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna be putting on this rubberized membrane Kay. on the bottom and up the sides. And what so does that do? Basically, this is gonna protect the wood from any kind of condensation, any kind of moisture whatsoever. Okay. Just one more added feature that we can do nowadays. Yep. So what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna brush on a primer and basically what that's going to do is just prep the wood to uh, adhere to the membrane. Just on this piece strictly? Yep. So what I'm going to get you to do, you're going to prime up here about that far. Okay. And then uh, about two thirds of the way, just prime that all the way through and up the other side. 
Doesn't matter how. Oh, I could be pretty thin on. there. Thin, thin take, or thick? Thin. Doesn't thin. take much. Okay. This is clearly not something that you would want to do yourself, right? This is you got to call in the big guns to do a big project like this. Absolutely. It, then you know it's done right. Yeah. You know, the professionals have done it. Yeah. There's no guesswork involved. It can really affect your heating bills and all that kind of stuff. So. Oh yeah, your your energy savings after new windows, it, you actually do notice it. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to go up the side with the same oh, okay. primer. Oh, All yeah. the way around. Yeah, but we're just going to go on the face of the side. Okay. Okay, all the way up to the top. Okay. So let's move this in for you. Okay. How far, how yeah, far out? Let's come down to about there. Okay. A little bit wider than that would be great. Perfect. Does it have to be like a paint, every nook and cranny? No, it's okay. uh, it's more of a it just adheres a glue. pretty good, yeah, exactly. So now we're going to put our membrane on, mm -hmm. and what I've done, I've kind of sliced the backing paper almost in half, maybe two thirds. Yeah. The the part I peel off, we're going to put on the uh, primer you put on. Okay. The other half's going to just lay loose because what we want, like I explained before about the positive watershed. Yep. That's going to come down the face here, okay. and then our other membrane is going to come up underneath it. So if we stuck that on too soon, we couldn't get, get it. underneath it. Makes sense. Right? So we're going to start by coming up about eight inches up the side there, okay. and make sure it's nice and tight. And it needs to be fairly tight, right? Yeah, we want it nice and tight. We don't want any voids. And then we'll just keep uh, sticking it on. I can't. Oh, you're doing good. Colorful. Sure. I'm kind of lining you up here. Okay. So now we've done the bottom one. Okay. We're going to cut our corners here. Yep. Oops. I'm going to let that stay loose. You can peel this one off and okay. attach that. And then our other paper, once we bring that up, is going to take up that spot right there. Okay. And then it's always that positive watershed. Makes sense. So no moisture should be able to get up underneath. That's the whole point of it. And or down in between, we want that to always uh, shed off. Okay. Okay. So you can do this side. This time we're just going to stick it on the face. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then our fin of our window is going to go over it, and then we have another membrane that's going to go over the fin. Okay. Okay. So just start peeling that off if you want. You can start up top and come down. Maybe about six inches above, or just where your primer is there. Yep. And just kind of work your way down. And no wrinkles. Yes, boss. <laughs> So Chris, the right prep is really important, obviously. It is, because if uh, if you just threw the window in against, uh, say, the wood, yeah. and any moisture did get past your siding or your your uh, weather barrier, it's just gonna start rotting the wood, yeah. and you're back where you started. Right, and today with all the new you know tricks of the trade, like this kind of membrane, it really helps things out, and, and as you said, you really will see a difference in your electricity bill. Oh, absolutely. Especially even just caulking the window in. Yep. Any, you get any uh, air infiltration, the caulking stops that, any of the little bit of moisture, it's just another added feature that to keep all the weather out of your, out of your house. Perfect. Now what are these little babies for? These are our setting blocks. Yep. So I've put this one because it's basically a three-piece window. Okay. So everywhere there's a mullion, we want the, a setting block right underneath it just to take the weight of the window. Okay. Okay, so we're going to nail those on. Takes me a couple more shots right. of the hammer than you. Okay, so our setting blocks are in place. Yep. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get you to caulk around the side, the top, and the other side. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're not going to caulk the bottom because if any moisture does happen to get in here, we want it to escape and down our membrane and out. Okay. So you need a, really a little tiny bit of air. Yeah, and there air. will be. Like I said, this yeah. seals up where, where it needs to be. And right here is where we just want any of that condensation to escape. Okay. Because if we trap it, it will sit there and eventually you don't want uh, moisture in your walls. Yep. So. Just a bead about like that. Yep. That close to the edge. Do that all the way around. Keep going. On yeah, that, go right along the wood edge. there. Yeah, right on the edge. Watch the water. Okay? Got it. How much does that window weigh? Oh, you're probably looking about four or five hundred pounds. Wow. Okay. 
So, Jeremy, you have the important job now. Yep, I've got to level a square at plumbing. Okay. That's fantastic. Okay, so now what do you do? Okay, now we got the bottom level. What I'm going to do, I'll just use my little torpedo here. Yep. And I'll just try the casements out. And this one's good. So those can be actually a different level than... Yeah, because it's... You got a window and then you got your center fixed yep. and then you got your two operators on each end. Okay. So what you're trying to do, you want to make sure everything is level right across. If you could put a level here and say, oh yeah, this is good, but then you come out here and this one might be too low or this one might be too high. And then you're fired. Pretty close. Yeah. Okay. Now we got the bottom level. Yeah. We got it center in the opening. Mm -hmm. The next thing we want to do, we want to make sure that the window is level this way. Okay. And just more shims, you do yeah, that? Yeah, we'll just do that. Also for casing too. Okay. You want to make sure this window is straight. When you put your casing on, you don't want to have a quarter re-drill and then you get here and it's like nothing because of it. It all seems so simple, doesn't it? Yeah, we, we seem to make uh, it look easier than it is. You definitely do. Then what we're going to do is we'll put a couple more emollients up there, mm -hmm. and then that's pretty much it for this window. We'll be ready to cut the shims, spray foam it, yep. and then we'll go outside and do the blue skin again, the double layers, yep. and that's it. We're done. Chris, I'm finished. Good. <laughs> did you learn? Oh, yeah, yeah. I actually did it. Jeremy just told me how to do it, and I took care of the whole thing. I couldn't see. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Chris, tell me about this window that we just put in. Well, SIS uses ply gem windows. Mm -hmm. They're a local company here in Calgary, been here for over 50 years. Yep. Uh, they are CSA approved windows. This particular window has casements on each side, so you can open them up, nice. get some cross ventilation. That'll unlike, make a big difference. Yes, unlike the other window, which didn't open up. Mm -hmm. This also has a coating on the glazing. I was going to ask you about that, because it looks almost tinted. It does, yeah, and that just uh, keeps the UV from, from the sun from damaging your furniture. And you can get different types of UV coatings on there? Yeah, there's different, different kinds. Yep. You can upgrade to... I guess more of a better one that... Like a darker one darker or a lighter, one. depending yeah. how much sun comes exactly. in that particular window. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And that, so you just kind of custom order what you need in a window. Yep, there's all kinds of options that you can use. That's really cool. So that's the nice thing about SIS, really, Chris, is that you guys do everything, right? So we don't have to have a company and wait for them to bring in a window, because that's part of what you guys do. Absolutely. The homeowner doesn't have to hire three different trades to come in and do a window, and then another trade come in and do the siding, and yep. then brick removal, and stone. It speeds up the job, doesn't it? Does, it does, yeah. absolutely. So you truly are a jack of all trades. We are. Yeah, excellent. Thank <laughs> you.